Few things evoke a sense of eeriness, quite like the desolation of abandoned spaces. It's not just the profound silence that unsettles, but the implied tales of horror that accompany the abandonment. The unanswered questions of why, what transpired, and where the once inhabitants vanished to. The disquiet is palpable, to say the least. Embark on a chilling journey with us as we delve into the narratives of 20 of the most spine-tingling abandoned places scattered across the world. Number 20, Kolmanskop. Let's venture into a ghost town, a place literally consumed by the relentless desert in Namibia. Rewind to 1908, during the construction of a railway in the region, a worker stumbled upon a glimmering stone, which turned out to be a diamond. In an era where diamonds held immense value, these precious gems were so abundant that one could simply pick them up from the ground with bare hands. The discovery triggered a rush, transforming the area into a boom town as men flocked in, driven by the desire to strike it rich. The diamond deposits were exceptionally rich, sustaining mining activities for many years. The small town flourished, evolving into a vibrant community. Before the upheavals of World War I, they had extracted over 2,000 pounds of diamonds, an astounding wealth that defied easy calculation. However, the town's fortunes took a downturn. The war caused a plummet in diamond prices, reducing these once precious stones to near worthlessness. Additionally, a neighboring town unearthed diamonds of larger sizes, diverting attention from the original diamond haven. By 1956, Kolmanskop had transformed into a ghost town, its former glory fading into the sands. Today, the site beckons tourists, its structures half-buried by the encroaching desert, offering a haunting glimpse into a bygone era swallowed up by time and shifting sands. Number 19. Dundas Castle Let's delve into the realm of the supernatural, where belief in curses adds an intriguing layer to the narrative. Enter the mysterious Dundas Castle in New York. Castles, once the epitome of status, have captured imaginations through the ages, often depicted in fantasy epics as symbols of grandeur. However, the Dundas Castle in the Catskills remains elusive, tucked away and shrouded in an aura of alleged curses that keeps most at bay. Contrary to expectations, the castle wasn't originally intended as such. It started its journey as a lodge, passing through various owners until it fell into the hands of Ralph Dundas in 1915. Irony unfurls as Dundas, the visionary behind the castle, passed away before its completion in 1922. The narrative takes a somber turn with the subsequent events. His widow, Josephine, never set foot in the castle, finding herself committed to a sanitarium a year after her husband's demise. Their only child, Muriel, faced a series of misfortunes leading to her institutionalization. The property changed hands within the family, each transfer marked by unfortunate events. Eventually, the family relinquished the castle to the encroaching forces of nature, paving the way for speculative tales about its history. The abandoned castle has become a canvas for stories, questioning whether it harbored familial prisons and if the ghosts of its ill-fated inhabitants linger within its halls. What should have been a triumph for the Dundas family transformed into a tale of doom, leaving the castle abandoned and ripe for tales of the supernatural. It wouldn't be surprising if the chilling saga of the Dundas Castle has already inspired a horror film, capturing the essence of its tragic history. Number 18, Fordlandia. Travel back to the 1920s, an era preceding the Great Depression, where the iconic figure, Henry Ford, sought innovative ways to streamline his automobile manufacturing process and cut costs. Adopting a shrewd businessman's approach, Ford turned his gaze towards South America, lured by the prospect of acquiring rubber legally and employing locals as workers to ship the product back to the United States at a relatively low cost. It was a classic case of bringing the mountain to him when he couldn't go to the mountain. Enter Fordlandia, a corporate city meticulously planned by Henry Ford, complete with extravagant amenities, swimming pools, a golf course, bungalows, and even a venue for practicing traditional American dances. From a business perspective, it seemed to align perfectly, offering easy access to materials, inexpensive labor, and a competitive edge over rivals, a perpetual pursuit for Ford. However, 
The town came with a set of stringent rules imposed by its managers. Everything from alcohol and women to tobacco and even football was forbidden within the town, extending its reach into the workers' own homes. As time unfolded, discontent brewed among the inhabitants, leading to a rebellion against Ford's imposed restrictions. Ultimately, Fordlandia failed to produce a single ounce of rubber destined for Ford's cars. This venture stands out as one of Henry Ford's most significant failures, serving as a reminder that despite a seemingly ingenious idea and a willingness to take bold risks, success is never guaranteed. It's a lesson in the unpredictability of ventures, even for visionaries willing to swing for the fences. Number 17. Krakow, Italy As highlighted in the introduction, there are various reasons for people to steer clear of abandoned places, and in the case of Krakow, Italy, public safety takes precedence. This once proud city, now a mere shadow of its former self, presents a cautionary tale. Originally settled by the Greeks in the 6th century AD, with ancient tombs dating back to the 8th century BC hinting at an even older incarnation, the city underwent the familiar cycle of growth and decline over the decades. Like many places worldwide, Krakow experienced expansion, new constructions, and the ebb and flow of inhabitants, witnessing key moments in European history, including the exodus to the West. However, the city's downfall came in the form of natural disasters, earthquakes and landslides. These calamities, occurring over time, rendered Krakow uninhabitable. By the year 1980, the once vibrant city had been entirely abandoned, leaving behind a standing ruin as the sole remnant of its past. Despite its dilapidated state, Krakow is open to visitors. Nevertheless, caution is advised, as the elements have taken their toll on the structures left exposed to nature without any hope of repair for about four decades. Despite its abandonment, Krakow hasn't faded entirely into obscurity. Its striking appearance in its dilapidated state has made it a sought-after location for films. Notably, it featured in The Passion of the Christ, among other cinematic productions. In this way, even in abandonment, Krakow continues to capture some measure of fame, a testament to the enduring allure of its haunting ruins. Number 16. Isla de la Munecas. Brace yourself for a spine-chilling story as we venture into one of the world's most haunted places, an infamous island with a tale as renowned as its eerie ambience. People have been forbidden from entering this place for 100 years, and the reason is chilling. The haunting saga unfolds when the island's caretaker stumbles upon a tragic sight, the lifeless body of a drowned girl. Convinced her spirit lingers, the caretaker takes an unconventional approach, adorning the island with dolls, mostly just their heads, in an attempt to provide the spirit with solace. Tragically, the caretaker meets his end in the same spot where he found the girl's lifeless form, adding a grim symmetry to the already unsettling narrative. Yet, the horror persists. Whispers circulate that the island harbors multiple spirits, with visitors attesting to the unnerving movement of the doll's heads and their unyielding gaze, seemingly possessed by a supernatural force. Dolls, inherently eerie in the right context, take on a new dimension in this haunted island's tale. A story of tragedy, superstition, and the paranormal. It weaves an atmosphere that leaves an indelible mark on those daring enough to step onto this ghostly terrain. Number 15. City of the Dead. In the Russian town of Dargavs rests the eerie City of the Dead, an ancient necropolis housing over 10,000 graves. What sets this burial ground apart is the haunting sight of corpses adorned in costumes and surrounded by personal items. Local traditions and tales of unexplained disappearances contribute to its ominous reputation, warning those who enter may never return. Though the origins of this centuries-old necropolis remain mysterious, Historians propose theories. One suggests that during the Mongol-Tatar invasion in the 13th century, residents built above-ground crypts in the expansive Caucasus Highlands Valley due to limited space. Another theory links it to migrating Sarmatians, practicing above-ground graves upon landing in southern Russia to honor the land. 
Today, the City of the Dead features 99 meticulously maintained medieval crypts with curved roofs and solitary windows. Remarkably preserved corpses, some in wooden coffins shaped like boats, bear witness to the region's tragic history, including plague epidemics in the 7th and 8th centuries. The cemetery, spanning 1.5 hectares, stands as a marvel of medieval construction, encapsulating the enduring mysteries and poignant history of the City of the Dead. Number 14. Pripyat, Ukraine Few abandoned places carry a tale as tragic as that of Pripyat in 1986, the year of the Chernobyl nuclear disaster. This once thriving community boasted schools, hospitals, stores, gyms, parks, cinemas, factories, a pool, and more exemplifying prosperity. Pripyat's vibrancy was symbolized by an amusement park, and with a population of over 49,000, it thrived as a lively city. However, this idyllic life came to an abrupt end in April 1986, when the Chernobyl power plant's reactors failed, releasing a catastrophic amount of radiation. Pripyat, within the evacuation zone, transformed overnight from a thriving community into a ghost town. Residents were forced to abandon their homes and belongings, leaving behind the life they knew, a stark reminder of the human cost of nuclear disasters. The deserted streets of Pripyat now serve as a haunting symbol of the consequences of shortcuts and the failure to protect nearby communities. While the city's frozen-in-time appearance has captured attention in video games, these adaptations should not overshadow the harsh reality. Tens of thousands had to abandon everything due to a disaster. Pripyat remains scarred by that tragic event, a somber testament to the irreversible impact of nuclear accidents. Number 13. Ruins of Valle dei Mulini Nestled in Italy's Campania region, the Valle dei Mulini, or the Valley of the Mills, stands as a captivating testament to thousands of years of volcanic activity and river erosion. This valley, once a bustling hub of industry dating back to the 10th century AD, reveals a rich history. In the 10th century, the valley thrived with ingenious flour mills powered by streams like Casalano, Cesarano, and St. Antonino, crucial for grinding wheat and supplying flour to the community. A sawmill provided quality wood, while a public lavatory served Sorrento's women. As industrialization took hold, the Valle dei Mulini became a key paper-making center, boasting up to 25 mills at its zenith in the 10th and 11th centuries. However, changes in the 19th and 20th centuries led to the mill's decline. The opening of Piazza Tasso in 1866, offering a drier working environment, expedited the mill's closure. Over time, the valley fell into disrepair, reclaimed by Mother Nature. The mill walls, once thriving with industry, transformed into a canvas covered in lush ferns and foliage, creating a green and exquisite environment. Today, visitors can witness this picturesque scene, a poignant reminder that nature reclaims built environments in the absence of human intervention. The Valley of the Mills serves as a testament to the perpetual cycle of creation and reclamation, illustrating the enduring power of the natural world. Number 12. Aniva Lighthouse. Perched defiantly on the rugged Aniva Cape in the Sea of Okhotsk, the Aniva Lighthouse stands as a testament to Japan's historical control of Sakhalin Island before World War II. Designed by Japanese engineer Shinobu Miura, this maritime sentinel was built to guide ships through treacherous waters plagued by currents, dense fog, and rocky shoals. The nine-story concrete tower, once a living space for up to 12 individuals, featured bunk beds and living rooms. At its peak, a mechanical rotating system powered the light, guiding ships up to 19 nautical miles away. Russia recalled its staff in 1990, opting for automation until 2006. Today, the Aniva Lighthouse stands desolate, succumbing to deterioration. Parts of the structure show signs of wear, with rust eroding metal doors and framework. The journey to Aniva Cape is an adventure, requiring a challenging ride, a two-hour boat journey, and a difficult climb. Daring tourists are rewarded with stunning views and the haunting presence of this iconic lighthouse surrounded by birds, creating a unique and memorable experience for those brave enough to explore this maritime relic. Number 11. Buzluja Monument. Situated in the Balkan Mountains of Bulgaria, 
The Buzludza Monument is a distinctive and controversial structure erected in 1981 during the communist era. Commissioned to commemorate Bulgaria's socialist movement and the founding of the Bulgarian Communist Party, it sought to symbolize the power and prestige of the party, aspiring to be a lasting legacy of communist rule. What distinguishes the Buzludza Monument is its colossal dome, spanning over 70 meters, adorned with socialist realist propaganda murals and sculptures. Originally a grand assembly hall, the interior hosted thousands for party rallies and events. However, since the collapse of the Bulgarian communist regime in 1989, the monument has been abandoned, decaying for over three decades. Deemed dangerous by the government, it is off-limits to the public due to severe disrepair that poses a safety risk. The Buzluja monument now stands weathered and silent, sparking debates about preservation, historical significance, and the enduring impact of a turbulent period in Bulgaria's history. Number 10. The Place of No Return The Ospedale Psichiatrico di Volterra, a former psychiatric institution with a haunting history, stands in Tuscany, Italy. Once housing nearly 6,000 patients, it earned the chilling moniker, The Place of No Return, for a reason. This asylum, closed in 1978, was a grim abode that employed harsh practices, leading to a belief that those admitted here would never return home. Stepping into the decaying institution presents a scene of horror. Empty beds, abandoned wheelchairs, and walls bearing mysterious codes. Carved into the courtyard walls are the markings of a patient who endured over a decade of confinement. Iron bars on windows and spy holes in doors reveal the strict monitoring endured by patients day and night. The closure of the facility followed Italian government legislation condemning severe psychiatric treatments, including the infamous use of electroshock therapy at Volterra. The eerie calm that now hangs over the corridors and chambers serves as a stark reminder of the agony that unfolded within these walls. Oreste Ferdinand Nanetti, a former patient who spent 14 years within these confines, left behind haunting sculptures on the walls. His enigmatic symbols and drawings baffle experts, bearing witness to the suffering hidden behind these crumbling walls. While time may erode the cryptic signs, the collective memory of the misery endured within the Ospedale Psichiatrico di Volterra persists, haunting those who dare to examine its terrifying remains. Number 9. North Brother Island Nestled in the East River of New York City, USA, North Brother Island harbors a rich and diverse history, playing a notable role as the site of a hospital for patients with communicable diseases such as smallpox and tuberculosis. Its most infamous association is with the quarantine of Mary Mallon, better known as Typhoid Mary, a carrier of the disease who never exhibited symptoms. Despite its historical significance and delicate ecosystem, North Brother Island remains strictly off-limits to the general public. Abandoned since the closure of the hospital in 1963, the island's structures have been left to decay, succumbing to the ravages of time. Overgrown and hazardous, the deteriorated buildings and unstable ground pose risks to potential visitors. Compounding the challenge, North Brother Island is now a bird sanctuary, hosting several endangered species that have made it their home. Unauthorized visits not only endanger the island's delicate flora and fauna, but also pose a direct threat to its unique ecosystem. While North Brother Island stands as a poignant landmark in New York City's history, underscoring the importance of public health measures, access is only possible with explicit permission from the city's authorities. Securing such permission is a challenging task. If granted, visitors are closely chaperoned by a guide or guard emphasizing the island's restricted status and the need to preserve its historical and ecological integrity. Number 8. Hashima Island Hashima Island, known as Battleship Island, lies off the coast of Japan near Nagasaki, abandoned for years but far from empty, as echoes of its past linger amidst crumbling structures. The island's story began in 1890 when Mitsubishi purchased it, symbolizing Japan's swift industrialization with concrete constructions designed to withstand typhoons emerging in 1916. Yet this progress had a dark side. From 1930 to post-World War II, Korean and Chinese prisoners faced harsh conditions, 
deeming the island Jail Island or Hell Island. Post-war, nearly 5,000 Japanese laborers crowded into small spaces. As coal supplies depleted in 1974, the population dwindled and nature reclaimed abandoned areas. Fishermen reported strange lights, mysterious noises, and chilling spots within the structures. Tourists can now visit, but the island's history continues to haunt. Hashima seeks UNESCO recognition, acknowledging its historical significance and preserving the eerie remnants of its past. Number 7. Aral Sea The ambitious plans of Soviet visionaries sought to transform Central Asia into a cotton-producing powerhouse. To achieve this, the two great rivers, the Sir Daria and the Amu Daria, were diverted to irrigate the arid desert where cotton could flourish. While Uzbekistan became a major cotton producer in the short term, the environmental consequences were catastrophic. The Aral Sea, once a massive saline lake, suffered a drastic reduction to 10% of its original size as a result of the diverted rivers. By the 1980s, both the Sir Daria and the Amu Daria had dried up before reaching the lake, causing rapid evaporation. By 1997, the Aral Sea had fragmented into smaller, saltier lakes, leaving behind a desolate landscape. This dramatic shrinkage resulted in severe environmental concerns, with rising salt and mineral content, along with concentrated pesticides, rendering the water unfit for consumption and devastating the fishing sector. The region faced harsher weather conditions and serious health problems due to toxic dust storms. Eventually, the area was abandoned, leaving behind only the ruins of the Aral Sea. In Jalanash, a ship graveyard emerged where vessels that once sailed on the now vanished sea rust and decay. Many, however, were dismantled for scrap metal, with only a few relics remaining. The tragic fate of the Aral Sea stands as a poignant reminder of one of the deadliest man-made environmental disasters in history, underscoring the profound and lasting impacts of ill-conceived development projects on the natural world. Number 6. Hotel del Salto The story of the Hotel del Salto is a tale of bad timing, unfortunate location, and plain bad luck. Nestled near the Bogota River in Colombia, this hotel was intended to be one of the most exotic in the area, and to a certain extent, it succeeded. However, the charm of the place came with a spooky twist, the alleged presence of ghosts wandering the grounds. Legend has it that the waterfall adjacent to the hotel was once a site where native people leaped off to escape conquistadors, adding an eerie layer to the hotel's history. As if that wasn't enough, the river itself became contaminated over time, deterring visitors even further. The convergence of these factors created an environment where the hotel, once envisioned as a luxurious getaway, gained a reputation for supernatural and environmental concerns. Today, the Hotel del Salto stands as a museum, offering a glimpse into its storied past. However, visitors are still advised to exercise caution, as the historical and spectral elements of its narrative continue to weave a complex tapestry. The hotel-turned-museum serves as a reminder of how the intertwining of history, environment, and folklore can shape the perception of a place, making it both intriguing and cautionary for those who choose to explore its haunted halls. Before we move on, here's today's subscriber's pick. Take a look at this image. People have been forbidden from entering this place for 100 years, and the reason is chilling. Behold the Soviet testing station in the Caspian Sea, spanning a vast 5,200 square feet. Within its confines, one can find a library, basketball court, and a hotel, designed to provide a decent quality of life for those engaged in weapons testing. Often referred to as the Russian Fort Bjord, this facility was a hub for experts developing naval weapons and torpedoes. Despite its closure long ago, it remains standing, a chilling monument to the horrors of war. Today, the site is off-limits due to genuine concerns about what might have been left behind. The facility, now left to rust and decay, stands as a silent witness to historical events. The fear of the unknown has led to a prohibition on entry. Numerous speculations arise about the potential secrets hidden within its walls. As always, viewers are encouraged to share their thoughts in the comments section below. Number 5. Ross Island 
Every nation, irrespective of size, bears historical moments that prompt reflection on its capacity for cruelty. In the case of Great Britain, a glaring instance is found in its colonial exploits, particularly evident in places like Ross Island in India. Seized by the British, this island served as a grim holding ground for political prisoners and convicts, functioning as the administrative center for the Andaman Islands from 1858 to around 1941. While Ross Island now draws tourists with its ruins, including the British Commissioner's House, a church and a swimming pool, it was once witness to darker days. The convicts, predominantly natives of India, the very land taken by the British, rebelled against their oppressors. Upon capture, they were compelled into arduous labor, clearing the island for the construction of opulent British homes. Despite its transformation into a popular tourist spot, with hiking trails and scenic viewpoints, the island's painful past is not forgotten. Abandoned over time, nature has reclaimed much of what was lost, serving as a poignant reminder of the shadows that linger in the aftermath of imperial pursuits. Number 4. The Floating Forest Your perception of this entity might encompass various notions, yet I assure you, its nature is more nuanced than one might initially anticipate. Homebush Bay, located in Sydney, Australia, has gained renown for its Olympic Park historical shipwrecks, and diverse recreational activities. It has evolved into a sought-after destination for sporting events, concerts, and family outings. However, beneath its vibrant exterior, Homebush Bay has another facet. It serves as a final resting place for ships. This isn't a metaphor. Ships were intentionally sent to the bay for disassembly, with their parts later sold off. The SS Airfield was slated for this fate, yet the process never materialized resulting in a remarkable transformation. Originally brought to the bay in 1972 for dismantling, the operations ceased, and Homebush Bay relinquished its role as a shipwreck yard. Consequently, vessels like the airfield were abandoned to the forces of nature. In this abandonment, a captivating phenomenon emerged, giving rise to what is now known as the Floating Forest. The bay, once a graveyard for ships, transformed into a sanctuary claimed by nature. It's undeniably a striking sight, one where the remnants of industry intertwine with the relentless reclamation of the natural world. Number 3. Sanzi The UFO phenomenon has not only captivated the world, but also become a lucrative theme in pop culture, fueled by the curiosity about extraterrestrial possibilities. In Taiwan during the late 1970s, the concept of Sanzi UFO homes emerged, a venture aiming to create UFO-shaped houses for vacationers, particularly targeting U.S. military officers on shore leave. Despite the clever idea, the project faced financial constraints and fatal accidents during construction, leading to its abandonment. Today, the Sanji UFO homes have found a new identity as a favored destination for urban explorers and photographers drawn to their unique and eerie aesthetic. These structures, born from an ambitious but thwarted project, have become a popular attraction for visitors interested in both avant-garde architecture and sustainable living. Number 2. Pavaglia Island Pavaglia Island, situated in the Venetian lagoon of northern Italy, has earned a reputation as one of the world's most haunted places, drawing interest from ghost hunters and curious tourists. Despite its eerie allure, the island is strictly prohibited for visitors, and for good reason. With a dark history dating back to the 18th century bubonic plague, Pavalia Island served as a quarantine station for ships arriving in Venice. Over 100,000 people succumbed to the plague and other diseases, turning the island into a mass graveyard where bodies were piled in pits and burned in colossal bonfires. In the 20th century, the island took a more sinister turn, being converted into a mental hospital where brutal medical experiments were conducted on patients with mental illness. The hospital closed in the 1960s, leaving the island abandoned. Despite public attempts to sell it, Pavaglia Island remains unsold and strictly off-limits to the public. Today it stands as a chilling reminder of the horrors of its past. Number 1. Bannerman Castle Discover another captivating castle in New York, precisely 50 miles above New York City, with a history marked by explosive events. 
Bannerman Castle, situated on an island in the Hudson River, was constructed in the early 20th century by Frank Bannerman, a businessman and military surplus dealer. Today, the castle ruins draw numerous tourists and serve as a venue for cultural events and performances. However, Bannerman Castle's past is riddled with challenges. Frank Bannerman amassed wealth through the Civil War and the Spanish-American War, acquiring so many arms that he needed a fortress to store them. After his death in 1918, his family continued residing in the castle. In 1920, disaster struck when the powder house exploded, triggered by 200 tons of shells and powder. This explosion severely damaged the castle's structure, leading to a subsequent fire that left the castle in ruins, a state it still retains to this day. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.